Welcome back to the Wyoming Way, everybody. Today I wanted to take you along and show you how I graze cattle in the late fall here in northern Wyoming. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel. I thought I'd bring you along today. I'm gonna go and check on the cows, check their water, make sure they've got salt, make sure everything looks good up here. And as you can see, I've got a I've got a helper today. Blaine, he actually he almost doesn't fit in my little extended cab Tacoma. Now I don't know about you wherever you're living, but here in northern Wyoming we are having an incredible winter. We've been having temperatures in the mid to high 40s every day. We've got another 10 days forecasted of that same kind of weather. It's even going to break 50 a few days. So we're going to be going into the new year with 50 degree weather. And the country has never looked so good. These cattle have been on fall graze now for two months and they are all just fat as ticks and sleek and shiny in excellent condition. Usually by this time of the year, we have all the cows located on the feed ground for the winter and we've been feeding hay for several weeks by now. But as long as this trend continues, we're just gonna leave these cows up here and let them graze because this is by far the best place for them. They'll be able to stay up here as long as the country stays open and until we get a lot of snow that'll cover up this grass. Then we'll have to get them in and start feeding them. So it's pretty cool that in December, these cows are actually eating green grass up here. See there, if you look closely, right here, see all this green? These were grasses, cool season grasses that started to grow in the fall. And then they kind of go dormant throughout the winter and then in the spring they emerge uh, really vigorously. But that's what these cows are targeting right now up here. It's extremely nutritious feed. And not only that, but they're also able to utilize all this kind of dried up rank stuff from the 2023 grazing season. And that's just something that never ceases to amaze me about cattle. Whether it's rooting through some of the old dried up stuff to find the cool season grasses that got started in the fall or whether it's utilizing the old dried up forage from the previous year's grazing season as long as this all stays open and doesn't get covered with snow these cattle will absolutely thrive up here and they can turn this grass resource into an incredibly delicious and nutritious protein product beef product cows are amazing so basically my job as these cattle's caretaker this fall is to check on them, make sure that they have access to, to good clear water and to make sure that they have free choice salt available at all times. So that's what we're going to go check right now. So here we are at the first water tank I'm going to check. This one is an electric well. There is a well casing there, and there's a hole in the ground and a submersible pump about 100, 150 feet in the ground. And it pumps water up out of the ground into this galvanized stock tank. And there's an electric float inside this pipe. And when the water level gets down, it trips the well on and it'll pump water until it fills the tank up and resets the float. And you'll see right here, we put these little ramps in all our tanks. These are bird escapes or, or little rodents or varmints that fall in the tank, which happens quite often. That way they can swim around, they can find this ramp and they can crawl out of here so they don't die. This big plastic pipe right here, the purpose of that is to protect that float from black bears. So it turns out that black bears love to get into stock water tanks, especially in the summer when it's hot. And they like to just swim around and kind of treat it as their own personal hot tub. 
And actually, anything that they see dangling around or bobbing around in the water, they think is like a bath toy and like a little rubber ducky or a little floating battleship. And they'll start to play with it and bite it. And one time I came up here and there were a bunch of bite marks, bite holes in that float. And yeah, the well wasn't working. So we have to put protective devices around all of the floats on all the tanks on the ranch to keep the black bears from tearing them up. And so as you can see, we're starting to get quite a bit of ice building up in this tank. Even though it's such nice weather at night, it's still getting pretty cold. And so we're gonna go ahead and put an electric tank heater in this tank uh, to keep the ice off. So this is the unit. You just simply plug it in and it, it floats and it'll just float around in this tank and it'll keep the ice off. So we'll go ahead and plug her in, make sure it works. Well, we've hit a snag. This, uh, this electric tank heater isn't working. I suspect what the problem is, is that the GFCI outlet is probably bad. That happens from time to time, especially as they age. Um, the little mechanism inside those outlets that's designed to trip in the event of a ground fault. Sometimes they get a little finicky the older they get and they start tripping all the time. So this one won't stay uh, cleared. So I think we're gonna have to do what John Wayne probably would have done in this situation. And that is, uh, uh, we're taking a trip to Home Depot. And we're back, we've got some outlets. And what I'm gonna use here is a weather resistant GFCI outlet, ground fault circuit interrupter outlet. That's pretty, uh, it's kind of the standard operating procedure for livestock people, especially in wet or damp areas, or like this kind of an application where it's near water. If that GFCI outlet trips, it'll kill the power as fast as like 1 40th of a second and it'll prevent a, a cow or something getting electrocuted in this tank in the event that something went amiss. And always remember to kill the power before you go to do something like this. Pro tip for the day. <laughs> I don't really wanna be like that guy from, uh, from down Periscope. Okay, we've got the new outlet installed. We'll go ahead and plug it in and turn the power back on and see if this tank heater works. Oh yeah, she's on. Can you hear that snap, crackle, pop? Well, good deal. So it'll take a couple hours for this tank heater to melt this ice, but this will solve the problem, keep the ice off this tank, make sure these cows have a nice drink of water every day. One thing I also like to do is make sure I zip tie this heater kind of in the center of the tank where a cow can't get to it. Because what'll happen is they'll come to get a drink and if they hook their nose over this power cord and get to playing with it, sometimes they can unplug it or they can mess up the heater. So you kind of want it out of the way and you also don't want it to be able to get up against the float because if it gets up against the float, it can melt a hole in the, in the float. That ought to do it. Awesome, we are in business. So before I leave, I'm gonna throw out a salt block for these cows. So salt is critically important to cows. It's required for proper nerve and muscle functions, blood flow and body pH regulation, water retention, and even sweating. And it helps cows, especially in fall grazing situations like this, maintain a healthy appetite and keep their body weight up. So here's the sticker on the salt block. It's got salt, iodine, and cobalt. These salt blocks are about 10 bucks a piece. And I'll usually put three or four of them out at every watering hole 
and they will last depending on how many cows are hitting that water hole but usually i'll put salt out about every two to three weeks well we're in good shape on this water hole so we'll head down the road and go check a couple more make sure everything else looks like it's in good shape come on Blake, get in Guys, I was just driving down the road and I saw one of my favorite cows in the whole world. That cow right there. Her number is 634. She's probably not gonna let me get very close to her. That's a great cow right there. She was born in 2016. And in 2018, when she had her first calf, it was really sad because she actually lost her calf. She had complications and the calf died. And usually that's the end of a cow. Usually they get sold after that. But not this cow. She saved herself. I actually was able to graft a twin onto her after she lost her calf. Another cow had had twins, and usually they can't raise both of them. So I took the one calf of the twin and grafted it onto this cow. And I'll be darned if she didn't raise it and do a fantastic job. Now she's one of my favorite cows. Really good producer, has a nice big calf every year. Does a really good job for me. I wish I could get close enough to show you, but the way I recognize her is she has a bunch of really curly hair on her forehead. She's a good one. I wish they were all like her. Now we're coming up on another of the many water sources in this pasture. As you can see down here, there's a reservoir, but it's, it's pretty well frozen. But that's okay because we have a spring up here. And this spring usually stays open even when it gets real cold because it is constantly moving water. Real nice producing spring for us. That red orange color is just iron in the water. It doesn't hurt them at all, but it does create kind of a discoloration. As you can see, that thing basically just runs all the time. So that looks really good. I see no problems here. And these cows have plenty of salt left. So we'll move along. And here we have a couple little reservoirs. The cows are keeping the water open on the edges there and are still able to get a drink. So everything's looking good here, guys. Well, folks, I think I'm going to wrap it up right there. So thank you for tuning into the Wyoming Way. We'll catch you on the next one. And Happy New Year.